So again, with the Thursday night games returning exclusively to NFL Network, that means CBS's Thursday night schedule starts hitting. That means Nate Corder, you're gonna be you're gonna be on TV. I'm gonna be on tomorrow. American television very soon on Thursday nights. Yeah. On CBS. On CBS, I think Big Bang Theory is our lead-in. So. Um, Big Bang Theory Mom. Yep. Which is the show you're on. Yes. Okay. And then another show that I don't care about. <laughs> you don't care about being the lead in. No, no. That's what there is no there is no I in, in Nate and no, in Corey. I care about my show and nobody That's else. That's right. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is Mom. Let's uh, take a look. This is uh, uh -oh. Mom on, on CBS. Walk with me. What's going on? This is a four star restaurant, and you're doing everything but give these people lap dances. <laughs> Don't talk to table two. <laughs> Christy, I know you're trying to make money, but you can't let men objectify you. Did you get a boob job? No, I just stuffed my bra with my kid's tube socks. Really? It's very effective. <laughs> Anna Faris, very, very funny lady. She is amazing. We did a movie together. Uh, I think one of your faves, I'm sure, Yogi Bear. Yeah, yeah. You've seen Yogi Bear. Who doesn't like Yogi Bear? It's a Bear. great movie. We spent like three months in Australia together, and she is uh, a delight. She's so funny, grounded, just a chick from Seattle. Super kind, super sweet. It's an easy work. And Nick Bakai is a showrunner. Nick Bakai is is great. He is. Uh, we have a fantasy league. Uh, Matt Jones is on earlier yeah, this week. He told me that, that <clears throat> Nick is uh, is screwing the pooch. He's on in that the one. toilet right now. Uh, but he won the league last year, so I give he him did. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How are you doing it? I'm doing well. I'm six and two, I think. No way. Yeah, yeah. I'm a. I'm. I'm. Last year was really dark. It was a dark time for me, fantasy wise. But this year, I'm coming back. <laughs> I made some really smart moves. Well, it's a good thing we have a second segment, so we could we could delve further oh, into your fantasy gonna, glory. We're gonna get into it. Yeah, Nate Corder, sure. you're in studio. Hello. All right, joining me here in studio from the television show Mom that returns to CBS for season number two tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Nate Cordry, good to see you, sir. Rich, a pleasure. Thanks for having you. me. You join me here on the show. You're a diehard Red Sox fan. You have uh, season tickets of the Red Sox. You, you join me here on the last day they can call themselves defending World Series champions. Yeah, isn't that heartbreaking? No, well, as a Yankee fan, I, I I don't find that heartbreaking at all. Of course, no, I I, I get it. So, but do you when the Red Sox are out, do you still pay attention to the postseason? I, yeah, for sure, I, I do. do? I, I don't watch every game. Um, once the calendar turns and we're into sort of October, I football becomes sort of like you know That's more it. dominant in my brain. But uh, but no, I I love base I love watching baseball. Me too. I really enjoy the pace of it, and I I don't I understand that the ratings are low and no one's watching. I think that's more because there's no stars on either of these teams. But I find baseball, I find the strategy of it and the pace of it really comforting. And I feel like it's okay. It's one of those games where it's okay to get bored. If you go to a baseball game and watch it, there's gonna be a moment where you get bored, right? And you have a conversation with someone next to you, and you're filling out your scorecard, and then you go back to the game. You keep score. I do, yeah, absolutely. When you I, go to games? I do. Not if I'm uh, if I bring a date, I don't because I don't want to look like a nerd. Well, that's a different type of keeping score, Nate. You yes, know what I mean? Rich. See what yes. I'm going? Are you I picking do. up what I am putting down? I accept it. I uh, I go on baseball road trips with my dad. I've done two of them. Oh, that's awesome. Where we take like a week and we hit like five or six cities. And what's uh, your favorite? Oh man, I mean it's Boston, yeah, right? Yeah, of obviously. course. But no, Wrig Wrigley was spectacular. Wrigley is like. Because uh, I, I worked with Charlie Steiner many years at, at ESPN, oh, yeah, yeah. and he had this line <laughs> for me because we did. He was doing the radio broadcast. I mentioned earlier that I would do the, the studio version of it, and he did the play-by-play. -play. And we're standing on the field at Wrigley, and it's a beautiful day. And he looks out and he says, "Wrigley is like the scene from Blazing Saddles where they built the fake rock ridge, where you have to do <laughs> is push the scenery and it falls yeah, down, right, where right. it looks just right. like." It's yeah, out of a movie set. Hanging by a thread. Right. I love that they still do the uh, the foul lines. When we were there, this is four or five years ago. Right. Instead of having just one of those push chalk things, yeah. they have a guy with a, maybe it's two or three yards long and there's chalk in it, and he puts it down yeah. and he hits it with a hammer and the chalk drops, and then he picks up and lifts it and puts it down. It's like- Get the batter's box, right? Yeah, it's like 1903. Like, just get one of the pusher yeah, things. Yeah, where's Roy Hobbs? Yeah. Where's Roy Hobbs? That's the question him? I want to answer today. Where is Roy Hobbs? Where, where, he's not in Chicago. No. The Cubs could use Roy Hobbs yeah. right now. Or the or, New York Knights. I think Theo is, uh, he didn't, he bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Are you, are you happy? Or do you have the shot in Florida that he has left? No, Boston no, and I, he is I, struggling in 
Chicago? I'm really thankful for Theo and all he did for the Sox. And, and every Halloween, I think about him putting on his gorilla suit and uh, running out the back door <laughs> in Fenway Park, which is a great Boston sports story. Yeah. Now, I wish him no ill will. I mean, I wish him all the best. He, he helped bring us a championship. So Theo's, you know. Now, we saw your tweet where you, you put up a photograph of who you called your parents. Uh, well, my adoptive right, your parents. Your adopted parents. Yeah. Uh, and that was Brady and Giselle. Yeah, it's still in litigation. They're not into it, but my lawyer, we were talking about it, and right. I think it's going to work out. You put up this photograph, you called them my, your adoptive parents. Yeah, yeah. You would like that? You... Wouldn't that just be a blissful life? You know, you live in the back bay in some beautiful brownstone. And yes. You wake up on Christmas morning, and I bet Christmas is awesome at their house. Every day is probably Christmas there. <laughs> yeah, every day is. It'd probably get old, you know? But I have, I, I think it'd be just a wonderful life to be adopted by Tom and Giselle. He is a dream come true. I only hear that he is, like, it, there, it's not hype. He's like a genuine, grounded, like... It is true. It's all real. Well, you saw, did you see the Brady Six documentary? It's spectacular. It is, a, it is, yeah. listen, you could say that about anything NFL Sims does. They, and NFL Network doesn't exist. This app that people are watching us right now, NFL yeah. Now doesn't exist if it wasn't for yeah, NFL Yeah, Steve films. Sable, absolutely. Exactly, and his dad, Ed. But that Brady Six documentary, where he breaks down crying, yeah, uh, recalling about walking around the block with his dad in yeah. day three of the draft, waiting right. to be drafted, where his mom is disconsolate at home, yeah. and he's crying. And yeah. it's like he has one life in every facet, right. but he still wears the scar, the scarlet number of 199 every day, Absolutely. and uses that. Yeah. Every snap I of his it, career. I forget what the quote was, but like the first day he showed up for training camp, yeah. he introduced himself to, to Robert Kraft and was like, I'm gonna be your quarterback and I'm gonna win you a Super Bowl. And he's like, oh, okay, Hanson, move along. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, three championships later, yeah. it's worked out. Yeah. It his is. photograph, the, the picture of Tom Brady. At the combine? <laughs> I yeah. mean, I think I'm bigger than him. He just looks like the saddest guy. Yeah. He's got his shirt off. It's very strange. Yeah, that they the have commissioner, to... by the way, has put the kibosh on, on, on shooting guys that way and making it. Make it. That was one of the things Roger Goodell did. He's just like, we're, we're not shooting that anymore. The yeah. Combine. Guys no, in it's, shorts. It's let's just watch him run with a shirt on. That's fine. Great. The other stuff? Nah, let's cut it. Are it's you worried about the, Bra the Brady Manning contest? Of course. I'm always worried. But the, but, the, but the Patriots at home, I think it's something like 33 straight wins against AFC opponents in Foxborough. And if you, if you had talked to me three weeks ago mm -hmm. after that Kansas City game, uh, I'd have a different feeling than I have today. It's funny, after that Kansas City game, I made sure to listen to Boston Sports Radio the next day on this, like... On your app? And it was, like, chaos. Those buffoons could not... Trade him! Get rid of Brady! He's over the hill! Bring in uh, Janine Garofalo! Whatever that guy's <laughs> name is. It's, like, easy. Relax. It's... Yeah. I mean, take right. a word from Aaron Rodgers. Relax, yes. people. But the Boston sports radio guys were just like, they couldn't freak out more. So, but I feel, I feel confident this Sunday, but it's, I think it's gonna be a great game. You yeah. know, I mean, if we go the next four games, we have Denver, we have um, D Detroit, we have the Packers. You got the Chargers looming too. The Chargers in December. If we can go, if we go 10 and six, I'll feel really confident. Well, I think that the you know? 10 and six might put you in jeopardy of, of the division crown because of that. You know, the Bills still, really? Bills are five, well, Bills are five and three. So right. if they match that record, they're gonna be 10 and six. We have the Bills in the last, no, I understand the last that, game. But or the... 10 and six should be enough to win the AFCs, but you do never know. Yeah, and it's never. funny that you mentioned Janine uh, mm -hmm. Garofalo. Mm -hmm. right? Jimmy Garofalo, yeah, sure. For Jimmy Garop Garofalo, right? Right. That, that, and that, in that Chiefs New England game, yes. I had Tom Brady as my fantasy quarterback. And he gets pulled out of the game, and so I thought I was going to get I thought I was going to get garbage points, and Garoppolo right. finds Julian Edelman for one five yarder that caused somebody who was playing <sighs> to tie me, Ugh. to tie me, and Ugh. I still wear that tie, Ugh. which is keeping me out of first place right now. And he texted me, he goes, uh, Janine Garofalo's brother, really enjoy his work. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fantasy That's text joke. I get. That's a good joke. Really enjoy his work. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god. He was my quarterback that night too, and I have Edelman as well. I have both of those guys. Yeah. Um, but when, yeah, they, I was sitting with my buddy Bill, who uh, who's, hates the Patriots, he's a, he's a giant Yankee right. fan. And uh, we were at a bar watching the game, he goes, 
just a game manager now. <laughs> Brady's a game manager. Like, is that true? I love the trolling man. Ah, uh, he's the worst. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Your buddy Bill is. Uh, I was thinking it could be Murray until you mentioned the, the whole Yankee uh, thing. I wish. Not... Yeah. No, I got to spend a blissful day with Bill Murray working on this movie Saint Vincent, which mm -hmm. came out I think last weekend to the whole country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think I've ever been prouder uh, of being in a. In a you're always excited to get any sort of job as an actor, mm -hmm. but then to spend a day with Bill Murray and um, to just sort of ask him questions and to be in a room rehearsing with him mm -hmm. and to just be, it sounds crazy, to be, be his peer, sure. even if it was for 10 hours. Because uh, I was always, I wasn't a big Belushi or Chevy Chase guy. Like I was always Bill Murray. And to spend a day with him was just a dream. And for the movie to come out the way that it's come out, it's so good. And it's a movie for everyone. And if you like Bill Murray, this is Bill Murray at his peak. I don't Finest. know. I mean, a listen, game. he's he's made some incredible movies, but um, hopefully he gets an Oscar nod for this because it's so well deserved. And it's a really moving movie. Saint Vincent, which is in theaters right now. Here's a here's a look. There's a couple takes where he got a little angrier and he stood up. Mm -hmm. And the first three or four takes, he was doing it, and I just was not in care. I was like. Bill Murray scream at me. Bill Murray <laughs> scream at me. Bill Murray scream at of me. Of all the times that, you know, because I'm such a fan of his, too. Yeah. And, and have been in your position. Although, you know, I'm not an actor. You're a professional. I would have been like, uh, I, I wish I was in a scene where he liked me. <laughs> right? I, I, I love that he was mad at me because I got to see him, like, emote. And I got to see him... Uh, adjust his performance depending on like the take and the director will come in and say yeah a little bit more here and and he's so sensitive it was it's like his work as an actor is like a dial you just like move it like one notch and you could see it in the next take he would go a little bit bigger a little bit smaller he was so good and sensitive mm -hmm. and this movie is so spectacular i'm really proud yeah to naomi watts is in the movie as yeah, well yeah melissa mccarthy chris o'dowd it's an amazing cast melissa mccarthy yeah well, that is one funny actress. She is the too. best. I had a really small part in The Heat, which came out last year, sure. playing uh, one of her knucklehead Boston brothers, which was basically just playing myself at 17. Nice. And uh, I got to do the accent. And uh, and she is also another delightful human being that I'd like to spend more time with. She's so funny and so down to earth and just delightful. Well, right back at you. Yeah. Thanks for coming hey, here. Hey, come on, man. It's my pleasure. You bet. Good luck to Thanks, you, sir. Rich. Please Thanks, come Rich. back. Please come yeah, back. Tell me how everything works out with back. fantasy and all that. Stuff. Thank you. Yeah, you have been invited back. Go Donkeys. There you go. That's right. Go Donkeys, which is the name of your fantasy team. I yes. think we did provide the perspective. I like donkeys. You don't just, like, give shout-outs to animals. Animals? Willy-nilly. Go alligators. Nate Cordry is here. <laughs> <laughs> the Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.